This is the video I wish every aspiring data scientist watches because in this video, I'll explain the four things which differentiate the wannabe data scientist from people who actually prepare for data science and land a data science job. And this is based on my 10 plus years of experience working in the data science industry for some of the biggest tech names like Meta and Cisco. And it all starts with the number one tip, which is that when you are trying to understand what you should be learning, you should always backtrack from the job listings. And let me explain what I mean by that. So if you go on YouTube or Udemy or Udacity or just a Google search on data science, you would find a lot of books, a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos, courses, certificates, and there is just so much stuff online for the data science term. And for someone who is just getting started, it is very difficult in terms of what they should be learning, from where they should be learning it. And what ends up happening for most people is that they start one course and then they see there is another course which is even better and then they go towards that. And that just leads to an indefinite spiral of starting a new course and then finding it difficult and then going to another course and months pass by without that person actually learning something useful. So the solution of this information overload problem is that though the number of courses and tutorials and books are almost infinite, but when you go on LinkedIn or any other job search tool of your choice and then you analyze those job postings, trying to understand what are the skills they are asking for. And and save one job description, go to the next one, and then try to see what are the job description they are asking for. What you would realize is that the skills they are asking for in these job requirements, they are not infinite. It will be the same 10 to 15 things which they'll be asking again and again. The terms they use to describe a skill could be different. For example, they might say, we want something who is good with data wrangling. Another one would be, person should be proficient with SQL. The other could be that the person should have deep expertise with data manipulation. But all of them are basically pointing towards the same skill set. So when you are in doubt, do use ChatGPT or Google Gemini or any other tool of your choice. And then just simply prompt them that this is the job description, what are the key skills they are asking for? And then give it another one and another one. You can also just paste, for example, five, 10, 15 job descriptions and tell it that what are all the skills they're asking for. And the pattern you would see is that it's the same 10 to 15 skills which they would be asking for again and again. And that should be your starting point when you're trying to see what are all the things you want to learn. And this is exactly how I started learning data science in 2015, because the problem back then was a little different. But now it is information overload. There are just hundreds, even thousands of courses for data science. Back then, there were almost no courses for data science, but this trick still worked. I went on LinkedIn, I found all the data science jobs I could find, and there were not many back then. And then I started analyzing, okay, what are all the skills they're asking for? And then I started an Excel sheet where I would keep tracking for this particular job, what are the skills they're asking for? And then I saw that there were eight to nine skills which every job posting was asking for. Then the next step is that you should know that in how much depth you should be covering those topics. For example, if they're asking for Python expertise or SQL, it is, very possible that you spend next 10 years trying to master them and you can still feel that you have not fully mastered those. I have worked in most of those skills for over 10 years now and I can tell you with utmost honesty that I don't feel that I know 100% of those skills. So it is very important that you realize that pretty much every skill is a bottomless pit. There is no end to it. You, there is no end to mastering Python. There's no end to mastering statistics, machine learning, linear algebra, et cetera, all of that. So for that, what you have to do is that you have to define how much you need to learn each of these skills which you have identified in the previous step. So in the previous step, when you went through the job descriptions, you can see, okay, these are the 10 skills I need to know. And then in this step, you need to know how much of those skills you need to know. And this will vary from level to level. For senior data scientists, the depth of the knowledge needed for all, each of these skills would be different than what is needed for, for example, junior data scientists, which most of the newcomers should be aspiring for. And the best way to gauge that is through past interview experiences. Because when you sit in those experiences, you would realize that what is the depth which is considered 
sufficient for each of those skills which you have gone through. Now, of course, as someone who is just getting started, it is very difficult to sit in those interviews. Of course, one thing you can try, just start applying and get some interview calls. But the other approach is that you ask people who have been in the industry, who have been taking interviews or giving interviews and see that what kind of depth is generally considered sufficient for each of those skills, for example, Python, SQL, statistics, etc. If you want to use my guide, I will post a link in the description where I've created a one-page roadmap that for each of the skills which I think are needed in the job market as of 2025 for junior data scientist roles, I have created that complete sheet on how much you should be preparing for the skill for the junior friendly roles. So feel free to use that guide. So the two steps which we have covered so far, First, you have identified what are the skills needed by going through the job listings. The second is that now you have identified how much you have to learn of those skills. Now coming to the third step of having some clearly defined goals for your data science journey. And I really want to emphasize and divide it in two parts. One is that define exactly what do you want and secondly define what kind of sacrifice you are willing to give for that. Because if you want something new in your life, you have to give out something which you have previously been doing. So the first step of defining exactly what do you want, just saying I want to become a data scientist is just not enough. It is very vague and a lot of people could have that goal for very long period of time without reaching anything. The next step could be that you add a timeline to it, that I want to become a data scientist by September 2025, for example. But this still is not sufficient because what is a data scientist? And when you say I became a data scientist, what does it mean? So a clearer definition would be that you want to land a paid junior data scientist position in a company which has less than 50 people by September 25. And this makes it a SMART goal. And SMART stands for specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goal. Make sure that when you are defining the goal, it is a SMART goal. And an example of a SMART goal is what I've described here. And then the second step is that, okay, what am I willing to sacrifice for this? Because if you want to become a data scientist in the next eight months, nine months, you have to be willing to define, okay, I am willing to spend four hours three hours learning data science every day. And that would require some sacrifice. Maybe you have to spend less time on TV, on your YouTube shows, on Netflix, etc. So what are the things you're willing to sacrifice so that you could attain the goal which you have identified in this first step? So having clarity on it, is critical, try to write it down and put it somewhere so that you could see it on daily basis, weekly basis, and that sort of reminds you that this is what you have to do. And these are the sacrifices which you have decided you're willing to give for this specific goal. So now once you have your goals in place, in the next step, I just wanted to walk over what are the three rules of mastering anything. And this is based on this book, The Talent Code. A little backstory is that about 10 years ago, I was very curious on how some people become the absolute masters of anything or how some people are able to learn something very fast as compared to the others. And I read a lot of books around that. I had read at least 10 books which were covering that topic. And the book which I liked the most was this book by Daniel Coyle. And Daniel Coyle is not like a book writer by itself. He is a New York Times journalist. And he was very curious about the same topic on how some people are able to learn something so fast, superbly, as compared to the rest of the people. And there are three things. And to learn that, he just did not sit in his room and started writing the book. He went to different parts of the world. He went to China to see that how some people are able to learn martial arts so quick. He went to Brazil to see that how some areas are producing world's best talent in soccer, etc. So he did a lot of very good research, which he boiled down into three things. And I think these three things are very critical for learning anything, including data science. And the first thing is that you need to have some sort of initial motivation, which he mentioned as ignition. So you need to have some sort of an initial motivation spark so that you could get started on that. And he explained it in, in detail that there are some things which resonate with us 
at such a visceral level that we cannot just stop ourselves from finding and learning more about it. So you need to have that spark to get started and that initial level of motivation. Once you have that, then the next step is deep practice. And he said that even people who are the absolute masters of soccer, of martial arts, etc., they usually tend to spend about four hours of dedicated deep practice for that particular thing. And if you keep practicing for four hours something which you have a lot of motivation about, then of course you start becoming very good at it. And the last piece, which is also very important, is that they have someone who is guiding them in a very subtle way. So he, the word he used was master whisperer. So the job of the master whisperer is just to see that how you are practicing and very slowly nudge you and guide you that what you're doing is slightly incorrect. You should try to improve your course using something else. And that subtle feedback loop really helps you to make sure that your four hours of practice, they're guided in the right direction and that you are not making some mistake without even knowing about it. So I want to include this piece of advice for you. It applies to everything, including learning data science. And I think if you spend four hours trying to learn data science every day and you have initial spark about it, and then you can get some feedback on the courses you are trying, the material you are going through, then that really helps you to stay on the most efficient way of becoming a data scientist. As I briefly explained that I have in the description below the one page roadmap, which you can use to not only know what are the things you should be learning about data sciences, what are the skills you should be needing to land your first entry level data science job, but also how much of that you should be learning and from where. The link for the guide is in the description. Also, if you want to look at the complete video where I've gone through the job descriptions and then trying to analyze the patterns there, what are the skill sets needed, the link for that 40 minute long video is here. It is pretty detailed and in length and will give you a very clear idea of what you should be learning from where. Please check it out. Thank you so much for watching.